So many of the fish that you'll see at the pet store are bred selectively to bring out colors, size, shape, and even fin types. This is a common practice in our hobby, and it's really common in all animals. Breeding two fish of the same species together to create offspring with more color patterns is something that's been done forever. Just look at all the different types of guppies, betas, and koi there are out there. If breeders didn't do this, all we'd have are a bunch of brown carp, drab betas, and gray guppies. I really don't know anyone that's opposed to this practice, because it's one of those things that makes our hobby so interesting. But there's another thing breeders do that's not so unanimously loved by this hobby, and that's hybridization. This is where you'd take two completely different species of fish and cross them together to get a fish that looks a little bit like this and a little bit like that. For people brand new to this hobby that might be confused about what I'm talking about, an example of this would be something I'm sure you've all heard about with dogs. Just think of all the different dogs that end in poo or doodle. There's tons of breeders out there that are crossing these dogs and swear they're the best dogs out there and there's just as many who would say this is a completely inhumane process and shouldn't be done. If you want my opinion on this practice with dogs and fish, stay tuned. We'll get to that eventually. One of the more common examples of this in the fish world would be the blood parrot, or some just call them parrots. This is a cross between a Midas cichlid and a gold severum. At least that's what I've been told, but I've never bred those two fish together, so I'm just telling you what I've heard. You might say it's two other fish, but it really doesn't matter. All that matters is we've got two completely different fish bred with each other to create a hybrid of the two. Some people love them, and some hate them. Those who love them say, hey, it's a living thing and all lives should be valued, while the haters will say they're an ugly mutant that's a disgrace to this hobby. I've tried to find out how these fish originally came to be, and I haven't really found an origin story, but I think it's probably something that happened by accident. Someone had the two fish together and they bred, and when the fry grew up, they were like, aw, look at these special needs fish. They're kind of cute, but also kind of ugly. But I bet they'll sell. We should do this on purpose. Again, I have no idea if that's how it happened. I'm just totally guessing here. Another big example of hybridized mutant fish is flower horns. This is a fish that has a cult-like following and people go absolutely crazy for them. There's competitions all over the world to see who can make the fanciest one with the biggest bubble on their head. It's an acquired taste for sure. Personally, I think the big bump on their head just looks weird and wrong, but hey, we all like what we like. If you like them, I'm fine with that. Here's an example from the world of African cichlids, the orange blotch peacock, or what most people refer to as OB peacocks. I actually know the guy who discovered that breeding peacocks with something else allows them to keep the shape of a peacock but develop this speckled pattern that I absolutely love. I don't know what he crossed with peacocks to get this look. I believe it's a type of imbuna, but I really don't know. I suppose I could ask him, because it's not like it's some highly guarded secret. I've honestly just never cared enough to inquire about it. If you know the two fish that cross to make OBs, let me know in the comments. So you see these fish and you're probably thinking, what's the big deal? Yeah, some of the fish turn out looking like something from another planet, but some, like in the case of OB peacocks, just have fancy color patterns. Why is this a problem? Well, in the words of the great Tom Segura, I don't know, some people suck. I think some of the issue is people see it as inhumane to do. You're tampering with nature and creating something unnatural. And others, well, they just think the fish are ugly. As far as the complaint that it's tampering with nature, yes, it is. But don't we do that with almost every natural product on the planet? We cut down trees to make lumber break rocks to create gravel and sand to build houses that we fill up with furniture that is also made from trees, and color our walls with a bunch of chemicals that combine together to make paint. Aren't we tampering with nature when we do that? Trust me when I tell you I'm not a guy that complains about these kind of things. 
You're not going to find me living in a mud hut in the woods wearing nothing but clothes made out of hemp and grass. I'm just saying tampering with nature is something that's a part of life. But John, you're missing the point. You're comparing manipulating nature for something fancy to look at in an aquarium that serves no purpose but to entertain its owner to making something that's a necessity to support life. Really? The pyramids of Giza, Mount Rushmore, and the Eiffel Tower are supporting life? No. These are symbols and shrines that serve no purpose but to give us something to look at and remember the past. Again, I don't have an issue with these things. In fact, I love them, and Mount Rushmore and the pyramids are on my bucket list of things I'd love to see. I'm just saying we manipulate nature in everything we do. We do it for necessity, we do it for entertainment, and yes, pleasure. And there's nothing you can do about it. All right, sorry, I got a bit off track there, but all I was trying to say is the argument that it's unnatural to cross two fish together to make a new interesting type of fish really doesn't fly with me. We tamper with nature every day of our lives, so get over it. You know, this just popped into my head. You're someone who argues that hybridizing fish is unnatural, yet you're keeping a fish confined to a glass box in your living room. If it wouldn't blow out your eardrums, I'd drop my mic right now. All right, enough of that. What about the people that say blood parrots and flower horns are an abomination? These are ugly, alien-looking fish, and I just don't like them. Well, to those people, I say two things. One, I agree with you. And two, we all don't like the same things. What you think is ugly might be something someone else looks at and says, aw, that's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Or what I say when I look at flower horns and blood parrots, which is, this fish is so ugly, it makes them adorable. The problem is, in 2023, people can't just say, ah, different strokes for different folks. Instead, they'll say, this person likes something that I don't like, therefore it's now my mission to make them see that they're wrong and should hate them like I do. Listen, even though you were raised in a household where your mom told you you were the best, you never did anything wrong, and you can have whatever you want just for wanting it, you need to understand the world doesn't revolve around you and your feelings. You like what you like, and I like what I like, and you're not going to change that. The sooner you realize that the way you feel about something isn't the most important thing in the world, the sooner we can all live happily ever after. So what have we hopefully learned here? Well. We've learned that even though hybridized fish aren't natural, and that's okay because almost nothing in this world is, and people like what they like, and no matter how hard you try, you're not going to convince them to change their mind. The fish keeping hobby is full of so many options of fish, plants, decorations, and equipment. As you're growing in this lifestyle, you're going to find things that you like and things you don't. Embrace the things that you like, do what makes you happy, enjoy it, and stop thinking that simply because you don't like something, that it's wrong. If you like all of these hybrids, that's great. Knock yourself out. If you don't, that's fine too. Just do your thing. Shut your mouth and leave people who do like them alone. As for me, well, I think you've probably figured out by now that I'm pretty much neutral on this topic. I absolutely love OB peacocks and blood parrots, but I also think flower horns are hideously deformed, unattractive mutants that I have no interest in keeping. Especially when you consider that these fish are notorious assholes that have to be kept in tanks by themselves. But you know what? If you're someone that lives and breathes flower horns, I say good for you. Do what makes you happy. I hope you enjoy the hell out of those fish and that they bring you years of happiness in this hobby. Don't let my opinion of those fish interfere with your love of them. And that's it. Thanks for watching.